Our next topic is CPR guidelines, what has changed and why by Dr. Pallavi Lande Margare. Okay, so before I start this uh, presentation, just a quick question. Uh, how many of you uh, know that the guidelines for resuscitation have changed in 2015? Okay, good. How many of you have uh, actually gone for a course or done an update or gone through it? So it's less than, uh, I would say, 25%, yeah? So uh, this is actually a very uh, kind of neglected or a dry topic to most of the people. And as we can see that uh, one of the five arms of uh, the logo, which is uh, for TAS, is a resuscitator, as a, the anesthetist as a resuscitator. So I think that's the reason why Shiv Sir has strongly recommended uh, this topic. And I would urge you to go back uh, after this presentation because it's going to be a quick one, a very short one. So go back, Google highlights uh, for uh, the ACLS. And I haven't included uh, PALS or NAS, uh, so you could go through that as well, okay? So CPR guidelines, what has changed and why? The HA impact goal by 2020 is to double the bystander CPR rates and cardiac arrest survival so that we do not land up in a situation like this. So how can this be achieved? It is achieved basically through the re frequent and the regular update of the guidelines every five years. So how different is the 2015 guidelines? It's, it's basically a comprehensive revision of the 2010 guidelines. And the update is only on the important topics which was addressed by the 2015 Interli uh, International Liaison Committee of Resuscitation. The continuous update of these guidelines is available on the website for everybody's quick reference. As we all know, high quality basic life support is a key foundation to successful ACLS. The chains of survival, as you know, in the 2010 guidelines is just simp one sing simple one. But in the current guidelines, it has changed into in-hospital cardiac arrest and an out-hospital cardiac arrest scenario. The convergence is totally different in both the settings. We can see the in-hospital cardiac arrest basically depends on the system-appropriate surveillance, whereas the out-of-hospital cardiac de arrest depends on the community support how well you're, you, know, you have the public access defibrillators and everything for your quick availability. A lot of this mentioned about the flexibility in the activation of the emergency response team so that we can actually get the defibrillators as soon as possible and start the high quality CPR. CAB, compressions, airway, breathing, has changed in the 2010 guidelines from ABC to CAB. It has been re-emphasized in the current guidelines. So this is one very important take-home message. Push hard and push fast now has become not too hard and not too fast. So when you mean push hard and push fast, we had got guidelines about of at least 100 per minute and a chest compression depth of at least 5 centimeters, which has now changed to a compression rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute and a chest compression depth of 5 to 6 centimeters deep. So we've got an upper limit to both of these criteria. Why so? Because it has been found that when the compression rates go more than 140 beats per minute, the compression depth actually decreases. Okay? And when it is, we, it is, a um, lot of studies have been done that when you go more than 6 centimeters deep, it can cause to cause injuries, although not life-threatening. But if you Closely observe most of the resuscitators, the compressions are more often shallow than being deep. Minimizing the interruptions in chest compression to less than 10 seconds is an essential component of high quality CPR. We can clearly see from this picture that when the compressions go uninterrupted, the perfusion pressure is maintained at a steady level. But when there are interruptions, now these interruptions have to be there. Mandatory interruptions like for ventilation, for rhythm analysis is going to be there. But you need to reduce the duration to less than 10 seconds. It takes a while for the compressions to resume the perfusion, uh, perfusion pressure you can see from the picture. Measurement of the proportion of the total resuscitation time that the compressions are performed determines the chest compression fraction. And that should be at least 60%. Social media. Social media has come up a long way. Of course, we do not want, up, want to land up in a situation like this. 
dispatcher guided cpr has been advocated in some co countries and it has been done there's a large study done in sweden which showed a significant increase in the rate of bystander initiated cpr when a mobile dispatch is used of course it will take some time for uh, it to infiltrate into our country new changes to acls uh, vasopressin has been removed from the current guidelines that's because there is no added advantage of using vasopressin alone or the combined administration of vasopressin or epinephrine has found no advantage so for simplicity reason vasopressin has been removed epinephrine should be administered as early as possible for the non shockable pea rhythm etco2 remains a standard class 1 recommendation it's a gold standard so if you have a consistent etco2 values of less than 10 mm of mercury after 20 minutes of resuscitation it's a strong predictor of failed resuscitation you need to withdraw the resuscitation of course in assuming the other factors as well ultrasound needs to be incorporated as early as possible as early as available for the ett confirmation maximum oxygen should be administered during cpr and it should be titrated to prevent oxygen um, overdose extracorporeal cpr or ecmo has come up long way it needs to be used in patients with reversible causes in whom you think they have cardiac etiology as the cause for cardiac arrest however it is resource intensive and expensive so its use should be done judiciously and of course in the facilities where it's available post cardiac arrest lignocaine is shown to prevent the recurrent vf or vt beta blockers has shown to have improved survival rates but they have to be used judiciously judiciously again because it can worsen the hemodynamic stability and cause heart failure special mention about opioid overdose because it causes a significant burden in the west uh, for the lay rescuers and the bls providers and treatment of this overdose with intramuscular and intranasal naloxone has been strongly recommended lipids have come to rescue to treat the local anesthetic as well as the other drugs toxicity thrombolysis and thrombectomy should be considered early and it should it is reasonable to treat the pulmonary embolism the something very weird that cervical collar uh, is out it's a, it's a grade three recommendation recommendation which actually causes ha harm so why this cervical collar has been removed it has been found that inappropriate application of survival cervical collars by the lay rescuers can cause dangerous rises in icp and airway compromise so it has been actually removed so we have been shifted back again to the manual spinal immobilization we need to wait for the next guidelines to see how they update that cardiac arrest in pregnancy is a must know left lateral tilt has been completely eliminated because it causes uh, it is not compatible with high quality cpr manual left uterine displacement should be done for the relief of aortocoval compression with either a single handed or a double handed technique perimortem cesarean delivery should be performed as early as possible at the end of 4 minutes of failed resuscitation or even earlier if you think that the maternal resuscitation is going to prove futile you patient is just resuscitated what what next so you have uh, the rocks you cat the patient subject the patient to cag to check uh, in case if you have a stemi or a non stemi with suspected cardiac etiology targeted temperature management again has come up a long way as you might be knowing that the 2010 guidelines recommended cooling of the patients to 32 to 34 degrees celsius but however this current guidelines we've got a range of temperature from 32 to 36 degrees celsius not really very cooling and that needs to be maintained for 24 hours active prevention of fever to prevent further neurological damage has been strongly recommended in these guidelines pre hospital cooling however with the uh, infusion of uh, cold uh, uh, saline is not recommended because it is found to do more harm than doing any good you need to find a sweet spot to prevent hypoxemia and hyperoxemia basically by maintaining the oxygen saturations of more than 94% hemodynamic goals of resuscitation should be there you need to correct hypotension in time steroids are not rec routinely recommended prognostication for cardiac arrest classically begins after 72 hours and you need to consider the organ donation as early as possible in patients progressing to brain death or in whom resuscitation will be terminated 
Acute coronary syndromes mention a special, uh, uh, need a special mention because that's the commonest cause of cardiac arrest, as we all know. Pre-hospital ECG interpretation and analysis by ray, rescu ray rescuers, along with the computer analysis, is strongly recommended in these current guidelines. So if you have a STEMI, shift the patient to a PCI-enabled facility. However, if you do not have cath lab, however, I mean, nowadays you see cath lab blooming in every nook and corner. Uh, if you don't have that, you need to transfer the STEMIs out. But before doing this, if it's going to take too long for uh, the shifting out, you need to consider reperfusion and then go uh, for PCI. However, field anticoagulation has not been recommended very strongly because it increases the chances of bleeding uh, and the benefits is not as great. Uh, prediction of the major adverse cardiac event uh, should not be done only on the basis of uh, high sensitivity troponin. It should be done in conjunction with the TME and the Vancouver role, uh, rule. Ethical issues uh, are many. They, you need to use uh, use of eCPR for cardiac arrest, the intra-arrest prognostic factors, then the review of prognostic scores, prognostication uh, for children and the function of transplanted organs after cardiac arrest. There's lots given in these guidelines. You need to go through this. Of course, we should never forget that we need education and regular updates. So high fidelity mannequins, feedback devices, frequent retraining, training of the bystanders uh, on enhanced only CPR before the help arrives. So the take home message uh, for my talk today is chest compression should be performed at uh, 100 to 120 beats per minute and it should be less than 6 centimeters deep. Vasopressin is out. There should be uh, integration of social media. TTM uh, or the targeted temperature management has been mentioned over the range of temperatures 32 to 36 degrees Celsius and we need to wait for 72 hours before prognostication. I wish I could continue my talk further but in the stipulated time I had to complete. So any questions? I think uh, we need to mention about the Rajkot team who have been educating the public for CPRs. Yes, I think they've done a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it is interesting because they are like, using social events like marriages and engagement events uh, for doing that, which is very good. Uh, well done, guys. Thank you. Pallavi, thanks a lot for the update. It was wonderful. Thank you. Just one thing. You were mentioning about the cervical collar. Yes. So actually, the advanced cardiac life support and the basic life support, that now has got different from the uh, primary trauma care. The, yeah, know, this comes under so the ATLS. So comes. the ATLS, the cervical mm -hmm. collar remains. And these are basically mm -hmm. non-traumatic patients. So the cervical collar takes a back seat. In, in suspicion of uh, spinal injury. Yeah. So that the manual spinal trauma. immobilization by lay rescue. So if we uh -huh. talk about ATLS, that is a separate section altogether. Yeah. So We're talking about the basic life support yeah. and the ACLS. So that's why cervical collar here is not that important. So yeah. It's been yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pallavi.